Welcome fellow bookworms to Brisbane. My name is Whitney and today we have kind of a readathon video I guess. So originally in August I was going to be participating in Aurelium for the first time and I have since learned that it is moved to September this year which is a big bummer for me because September doesn't really work for me. Um, it's my birthday month and I always just kind of want very very low stress like no pressure or anything like that and I still create a TBR because I'm a TBR girl but I'm more free as far as what I want to read um so I basically kind of pick what I want to read and then do a TBR off of that um so yeah I was a little bit bummed because I was really excited to participate and I don't think participating later in the year is going to work so I'll probably just wait until the spring semester but I did read a bunch of books for the um, novice path and my character's background so I wanted to go ahead and talk about the books that I did read for that and then there's also another readathon that is happening that I was bummed because I was like I'm planning on participating in Aurelium so the way this readathon works isn't really going to work with how I'm planning on doing Aurelium because I was going to like time block um, like Allison does at Allison on a book break. Uh, I love how she does Aurelium and so it's like this TBR the way it's working not going to go with that very well. But since Rillium isn't happening, it's not a problem. So I'm going to be participating in Deck of TBR-a-thon, which is put on by Becca at Becca Books and Blue Joe and Chloe at Always Booked. Um, Becca, I've been watching for quite a while now. Chloe is new to me, uh, so I wasn't familiar with her channel at all. Um, but yeah, I'm excited that I can participate now. And I originally, when I did my July TBR game, I did it for July, August, and September. Um, because I, August was supposed to be really up, and then September I wanted to be more mood read type. And so there is still a stack of books that I know I'm not going to get to in June. June has not been a very successful reading month. We're two weeks in and I've only read five books, which is very, very light for me. I know for some people, you know, they read five books in a whole month. For me, reading is pretty much my only hobby. Um, and so, like, even when I'm watching something, I'm reading a book at the same time. Uh, and yeah, I just had a lot on my mind and on my plate, and so I just haven't been reading. Um, so anyway, I still do have a huge stack. I have, let's see, six seven books, <laughs> um, two of which are quite chunky. The one's a middle grade um, young adult, so it's a quick read. Uh, and then I also do have my normal stack of books. I have my genre-a-thon, which is my read-a-thon I always put on, which is just once a month. Um, so I have two books for that, but it's they're really short books. And then I have my ABC title challenge. I have two books for that. And then I do have my buzzword books, uh, buzzword book which actually the buzzword this month was um, for August is like and I was like I don't think I have a book I'm gonna have to add an extra one but there's a series that I read the first book in and absolutely love loved a couple months ago and I immediately got the next two books because it's a trilogy but I haven't had a chance to read them the second book is has the word like in it so that actually works out perfect so you read that one in August and then the other one the last one in September so I'm really really excited about that so I'm gonna go through all my um Aurelium the Novice Path my character background books and then I'm going to pull the cards for Deck of tbr -thon. And what I'm going to do, because they said, you know, you pull a card, read a book, and then pull the next card. And there's three levels of prompts for each card. Um, so you can get one point, three points, or five points, depending on which prompt you fulfill. Um, I like to have my TBR all set before I go into the month. So I'm going to actually pull cards now. And I think I'm going to pull 13 cards. Um, cause you know, there's 13, um, numbers and, or, you know, face, face cards. And so I'm going to pull 13 
and just work off those. And then if I finish those 13 books, I'll pull, you know, maybe a card at a time and just see how the month goes. But I like to have at least, you know, that first little set. And 13 is a good number, and I'm hoping I can get the rest of what I need to on this TBR. Um, and I do want to still do a themed vlog in August as well. So I'm hoping I have some piles ready to go. And I'm hoping maybe one of the cards will work for something in those piles. So that's how I'm going to do it. They did say that's perfectly fine. Just as long as you're reading them in August. Um, you can go ahead and just pre-pull the cards. Which is what's going to work best for me. Uh, so yeah, let's go ahead and get into the Novice Path and my character's background. Um, so I'll link the video that I did when I created my character and all the information on my character, um, the story and everything like that. But as far as the novice path goes, the first one it says, um, no the novice path entrance, read a book with a map. And so for that one, I went with Ruin and Rising by Lee Bardugo. This is the third one in the Shadow and Bone trilogy. Um, there's also the whole Grishaverse, so there's more books in the within the Grishaverse. But this is the third one of the trilogy, and I was glad I was finally able to read it uh, and finish that trilogy off because I'm really excited for the next duology in the Grishaverse, which is of course the Six of Crows, and I'm excited for that one. I did enjoy the series overall. I think book one and this one I gave five stars, and book two I gave four stars. I really didn't. There's kind of like not really a love triangle, more like a love square. Um, and not even that, it's just like potential love interest for our main character. And the one character, I just really didn't like them together. And in the second book, it gets very, very angsty. Uh, and I just did not like that dynamic at all. Um, so that's why the second book only got four stars just because that dynamic and it was heavy throughout and so yeah but overall really love the trilogy basically you have Alina and her and her childhood best friend are soldiers and they're going across the fold or the unsea which is just this like scar across the land that splits the kingdom um and there's monsters it's like completely dark in there there's monsters and such and while they're traveling, they get attacked and Alina releases this light um, and this power that she didn't know she had. And so she ends up getting taken to the Grisha, who are the people with the magical powers and kind of like the second army for this kingdom. Um, and she gets taken there and then their leader, the Darkling, kind of has more plans for her. Um, and so it just kind of goes from there. In each book, there is like an amplifier, um, these magical animals that have an amplifier that amplifies her power. And so each book, they're kind of also searching for this different animal as well. So really, really fun series. Really enjoyed this. This is the only Lee Bardugo I have read so far, but I really like the writing style. It's so easy to get into. Um, and so I'm looking forward to reading more by this author for sure. So there's that one. Then we have The Ash Torn Tree. A book that keeps tempting you or top of your TBR. Um, and for that one, I ended up reading <laughs> Butcher and Blackbird by Brandon Weaver. I actually listened to this on audiobook because the way they did the audiobook is really, really cool. Basically, you have the different POVs, you know, the male and the female love interest. Um, but even when it's like the female point of view, when the male look love interest speaks um Rowan when he speaks that voice actor speaks his line essentially so you kind of have them bantering back and forth which is awesome really recommend the audiobooks if you're interested in these definitely check trigger warnings these are about serial killers and so it's a dark romance about serial killers but so much fun it definitely has dark humor but it is you know heavy topics and such um, but there's a lightheartedness to it that I really enjoy, and I really enjoy that dark humor. Um, the third book, 
I'm so looking forward to. I've listened to the second book as well. Third book is coming out, I think, the end of this year, maybe early next year. And I think that one's going to be my favorite, so I'm really looking forward to that one. But yeah, I absolutely love the first two books so far. Really a lot of fun. There's that one. Then we had The Mist of Solitude read a standalone. And for this one, I went with... The Moth Keeper by Kay O'Neill. This is a graphic novel, um, kind of like a fantasy graphic novel, and it's about this girl, what is she? Anya. <laughs> I was second guessing myself. Anya, and she ends up becoming a moth keeper, and there's a lot about like the community and kind of feeling like an outcast and alone, even within like this wonderful community and such. And the pictures are gorgeous. I just really, really enjoyed this one. I'm not, this is like my first graphic novel. I read a couple manga, um, but the only thing I will say about this one is there's a lot of times where it's just the pictures and no like little dialogue and I'm not good at interpret interpreting that. Um, and it kind of reminded me of when I got my autism diagnosis and he did the story um, and I had to like, you know, like what's happening in this picture and such. That's kind of what it reminded me of and I'm like, I'm not good at that. Um, but I did absolutely adore this one. This one's really, really cute. Um, and I'm looking forward to picking up more by this author as well. There's that. Then, let's see, we have Ruin of the Sky. Read a book featuring ghosts slash haunted house or other supernatural elements. And for this, I went with The Diviners by Libba Bray. Um, this one you definitely have like that occult element. There's this spirit called Naughty John. Uh, and these diviners have like special abilities as well. Um, and yeah, this was a lot of fun. Basically, you have Evie, maybe? <laughs> and it doesn't have a dust jacket. So, and I'm horrible with names. But anyway, she gets into some trouble and ends up going to live with her uncle who has this museum for the occult and such um and then these murders start taking place and the police contact her uncle to help them because they seem ritualistic in nature um and Evie has the power to by touching things she can like get information by touching things um and so she ends up kind of getting involved and such so i'm looking forward to seeing where this goes it is the 1920s in new york and so um you kind of have that you know like the flapper girls and the zekeville girls and such and so it was a lot of fun i really like the setting i'm looking forward to the next one there's that then we had Obsidian Falls, read a thriller or mystery book. And for this one, I went with Sadie by Courtney Summers. This, I haven't heard a lot of people talk about it, but the people I have heard talk about it really seem to love this. And now I know why. Um, again, check trigger warnings. It is definitely darker. But basically, you have Sadie and her 13-year-old sister gets assaulted and murdered. And so she goes on the path to try to find her sister's murderer um and then this podcast gets assigned you know to follow the trail essentially um and yeah absolutely love this it was so well written uh and I can see myself rereading this fairly soon actually so there's that one then we had um Tower of Rumination, read a five-star prediction. This is another one I actually listened to, but I do have a physical copy as well. And that was Emily Wilde's Map of the Otherlands by Heather Fawcett. This is such a fun series. Basically, you have Emily, and she's like a scholar, um, and she goes... In the first book, she ends up going to this remote village. She's making an encyclopedia of fairies, and there's one fairy type that she just hasn't nobody's had a lot of research into so she ends up going to this remote village trying to find this fairy type and learn more about them um and then her like academic rival i guess ends up coming and 
getting involved and he's kind of a bit of a mess and so yeah this was a lot of fun in this one um she's trying to find like fairy doorways and such so a lot of a lot of fun cozy fantasy um absolutely adore those ones then the last one for the novice path was aurelium academy arc a book with a school setting uh, and this was easy because I've been rereading these. Um, and so I read Harry Potter and the Order of the Phoenix, which is the fifth book in the Harry Potter series. Um, and so yeah, they're obviously at Hogwarts School for Witchcraft and Wizardry. Uh, and so it's definitely a school sit setting and worked very well for that. Then let's see, so we have our background. And so my character is a little bit complex and so there's a couple that I did both for the background and this first one is for whether your character is a wildling which is more you know rural country or whether they're urban um, and mine is actually both so for wildling it was to read a book largely set in a forest or outside and so I read Wizard's First Rule by Terry Goodkind. Uh, and this was actually a husband pick. And it definitely worked for like the forest setting and such. Um, and so this one basically... Uh, what's his name? <laughs> it's so horrible with names. Uh, let's see. Richard. Uh, he's a woodman and a warrior, and then he gets chosen basically bear this sort of power. Um, and then there is this like dark ruler who's trying to take over. The kingdom is kind of split into three parts, and there's magical barriers between each kingdom, and those are failing. And so he basically goes on this long quest trying to learn about his sword um, and his role and then stop the rise of power and he meets this uh, woman who is there's more to her than what it seems um, and she also has this power and so they're kind of trying to stop the rise of this ruler um, throughout the book so that was that one and then we had urban books set in the city or a town and for this one, I went with The Secret Life of Bees by Sue Monk Kidd. Uh, and this one, you have this uh, South Carolina town of Tiburon. Um, and so it, it worked for that. And basically, you have Lily and Rosaline. Uh, and they... Rosaline makes... It's during, like, the Civil Rights Act. And so... Rosaline's going to vote and she makes these very racist men angry um, and so Lily ends up breaking her out of jail and they go to Tiburon, South Carolina where Lily's hoping to learn more about her mother um, and so that's kind of the whole premise of it and there's these three black sisters who are beekeepers um, and so she's She's spending time with them. So those are the two, like I said, um, kind of where you're from, where your character's from. Then we have our Providence, um, or Providence, and again, my character's from two different ones. So that's why they have the urban and the um, wildling, <laughs> because of the different provinces they're from. So the first one they're from is Dark Meadow, uh, and that's to read a Dark Academia. And for this one, I ended up reading A Deadly Education by Naomi Novik. Uh, and this is the book one in the School of Mance series. And basically, you have these... L is goes to the school, um, but the only way to leave the school is to graduate or die. And there's, like, the school's kind of sentient. There's no teachers or anything like that. And there's also monsters that are attracted to the mana that these kids have that are roaming the the school. Um, and so each day it's life or death. You can't go anywhere by yourself. 
Um, and so, yeah, it was very interesting, like the vibes of it. There's things I didn't fully love about it. I think I ended up giving it four stars because there's just things that I didn't think were fully explained or didn't fully make sense to me. Um, but overall, I really liked the vibes of this one. So there's that one. Then we had Etheria, and that is to read a book that features Fae or Elven characters. And for this one, I was reading the Lord of the Rings um, trilogy. And so I read The Return of the King for this one. Um, this is my husband's old copy. I read a different one. We had a different one, but it was farther back. So I just grabbed this one. And so yeah, I was finally able to finish the Lord of the Rings trilogy. I had already read The Hobbit. Hobbit's probably my favorite of them. Um, I did enjoy reading them, but I definitely prefer the movies with these ones. I think they got a little bit dense at some points and just kind of plotty. But overall, I'm really glad I did read these because it definitely gives you more context that context that you just don't get in the movies. So really enjoyed that one. And then for our heritage, my character is actually an earthling, um, an earth earthling. And it says to read a book with elemental magic or an elemental word in the book or series title, air, fire, earth, or water. And originally I was going to read um, something else, but I ended up DNFing it. So then I went on with this one, which actually I think worked better because since my character is an earth earthling, this one has earth in it. So it's Walk on Earth, A Stranger um, by Ray Carson. Uh, and this is the book that the second book works for uh, Buzzword in August. So I'm really, really happy. I absolutely love this. Um, so basically our main character has... Like, she can sense gold, and it's kind of during the gold rush. Uh, and so something happens, and she ends up going on the run. She pretends to be a boy, so you have, like, kind of that gender swap aspect. Um, and then she's going along the Oregon Trail. Like, she's headed to California, but most of the people going to California, the trail, they follow the same trail until a certain point, and then it split off. Um, and so you have that Oregon Trail aspect. It felt like my childhood in a book because you had a lot like that Oregon Trail game, like a lot of the components that are in that were in here. So I absolutely love this. Um, and yeah, she's just, she's trying to escape. Um, and you also have kind of her first, her childhood best friend, first love situation going on as well. And it was just so much fun. I'm not sure how much I'll enjoy the next two um, in comparison to this first one. I mean, I think I'm going to enjoy them. It's just that Oregon Trail aspect was so amazing. But now going forward, they're in California. So I'm like, will I enjoy it as much? I don't know, but we're going to find out. So there was that one. And let's see here. And then you have your conduit. And I'm going with bone because I'm part of the archivist guild and so I have the option to have a bone conduit and this is to read a book with a bone skull on the cover or the word bone in title slash series names um and for this one we read the maze of bones by Rick Riordan, which is the first book in the 39 Clues series. This one, you have Amy and Dan, and their grandma dies, and they can either take a million dollars or get a clue, which takes them basically on this treasure slash scavenger hunt. Um, and so they obviously take the clue. Uh, and I really like that this had like a historical figure component. It had Benjamin Franklin and then it also took him to the catacombs in Paris, which is where you got the Maze of Bones. Um, and each one, like I think next one's supposed to have Mozart as a historical figure. So I really, really like that component. Uh, I didn't love these. It only got three, this one, um, <laughs> it only got three stars. And I think the others are probably going to be on par just because the reason I didn't love it were basically the characters. Um, they just didn't feel very believable. Uh, and so, yeah, but I did enjoy it. It's very, very fun, and I love that historical aspect to it. Then, let's see, the last one is for, um, the, the guild, Your Legacy, and so I am part of the archivist, 
Uh, and I went with Valenus, which is the god of death and rebirth. And that is to read a book with high stakes where you think the characters could die. And so for this one, I read This Dark Descent by Kaylin Josephson. Josephs Josephson. <laughs> I can't talk. I love this one. I had a feeling I would and I put it on my wish list. And again, thank you to Mariana for sending this to me as a gift. It did not disappoint. I absolutely love this. And you basically have like this deadly horse race. Um, and there's a lot like political strife and intrigue and such. Um, and then also this deadly horse race um and there's enchanted horses and there's horses that are actually golems um and animals that are golems and kind of this like found family aspect it is just so good i absolutely love this and i cannot wait for the next book especially the way it left it like it hurt my heart where it left it so i love this one uh, and so that's all for, like I said, my novice path and my character background. Um, like I said, I probably won't do Aurelium now until the spring equinox, um, which is a bit of a bummer, but like I said, just kind of how the rest of the year is planned out for me, um, or, you know, what I have, what I have planned in my head, it's just not going to work out since it's not happening in August this year. But that does mean I can participate in Deck of tbr -thon. So I do have the prompts here. And of course, I will link um, Becca's channel and Chloe's channel down below if you're interested in participating as well. I do have my cards. I already shuffled them um, because it's a pretty brand new deck. This is um, the Aurora deck. <laughs> So that's the cards I have. We don't really play with cards. I don't even know why we picked them up. I'll shuffle them one more time. Ah, I'm not very good at shuffling, especially new cards. And these ones are slippery. So I think what I'm going to do, since they are fairly new and not very shuffled, I'm just going to like cut and whatever cards on the bottom, um, I'll, I'll do that one. Uh, and maybe we'll just get some different cards that way. So like I said, I, I'm going to choose 13 and we'll see which of these books I can get on there. Because I do have, like I said, seven left over from the original TBR for July. But like I said, those I was planning on reading through September, so that's not a huge deal. And then I have... My genre thon, my ABC title challenge book, so that's four, and then my buzzword book as well. So let's go ahead and we'll cut here. So that is a two. Um, so we'll take that one out. And so for that, a two, you can either do, um, it's related to your last read. So you can either do the same genre, same color, or same letter of the author's last name. My last read was The Devil in the White City by Eric Larson. Um, and so we got kind of black, white, and a little bit of yellow. So let's see what we can do here. Or I can do Larson, so L. Um, and what was the other one? Same color, which I want to go for L because that will give me five points for my team, which I'm team red. Because I'm a TBR girly. I don't know if I already said that. So let's see here if I have any L's. That's M, C, W. Um, hmm. I don't have L. So that's not going to work. So I'm not going to get the five points. But I can do the three points for same color. Because I definitely have some that work for same color. Um... I think. Oh, well, that's more of a blue. Let's see. Let's see here. Uh, that's more silvery. So I guess I'll go with one of my genre -thon books um, because it has the mostly black background and kind of the grayish white here. So I'm going to be reading The Story of My Life by Helen. Oh, 
Yeah, they said as long as it's over 50 pages. This one's 75. I was like, oh, wait a minute. I don't know if it meets the length. So yeah, I'm going to be reading The Story of My Life by Helen Keller. We're going off the black background is what we're going with. Um, and this is all about Helen Keller, which I'm sure everybody's familiar with. Um, but she was basically, uh, oh, basically, she was blind and deaf um, and was very successful despite of that. So I'm interested. I don't think I've ever actually read this. Um, and that will take care of one of my genre -thon books. So I'm just gonna put this. And I meant to say the colors and the suits don't matter. It's all about the numbers. So that's my first book. And then let's go ahead and read. We'll kind of shuffle between each one. Um, and so we'll pick our second book. So I'm gonna choose 13. So we'll shuffle that and then we're going to choose this one. Which one? Seven. Okay. So seven is someone else picks. So I need to do a friend or spouse pick, a like a poll pick or a librarian pick. Um, this one's unfortunately only going to give me one point. I guess I could do a poll pick. Um, Yeah, I guess I could do a poll pick at some point, but definitely not going to get the full five points. I'll honestly probably just have my husband um, choose a book because, you know, that's easiest for me. So, yeah, I'll have him do that in a little bit. Um, so we don't have a book for this quite yet. Um, and so, yeah, let's go ahead and choose the next one. I'm sorry, this is a little bit chaotic, so. Okay, next we're gonna go, let's go lower this time. Okay, so we have a queen, which is the format of the book. So, it's, this one's easy for me, so we have the queen and so it's either audio ebook or physical physical being the five points um and i always read physical so this is going to be quite simple i'm gonna wait to choose this one as well though um until i choose the other books and that way i can just kind of see what's left over i'm a physical reader so the majority of my books are physical so that's an easy one okay so that's three we're on to number four Is. Okay, let's do high. Okay, so now we have a king, which is genre. So it's either your favorite genre, a host favorite genre, or rarely read genre. Um, so that works. I can do the rare, rarely read. Uh, and for this one, I'm going to be reading The Appeal by Janice Hallett. This is um, like kind of cozy mystery, murder mystery, which they aren't my favorite and I don't read a whole lot of them. So that definitely works for that. And this one it says, the Fairway Players, a local theater group, is in the midst of rehearsals when tragedy strikes. The family of director Martin ha Hayward and his wife, Helen, play star. Their young granddaughter has been diagnosed with a rare form of cancer and with an experimental treatment costing a tremendous sum, their castmates rally to raise the money to give her a chance at survival. But not everybody is convinced of the experimental treatment's efficacy, nor of the good intentions of those involved. As tensions grow... As tension grows within the community, things come to a shocking head at the explosive dress rehearsal. The next day, a dead body is found, and soon an arrest is made. In the run-up to the trial, two young lawyers sift through the material, emails, messages, letters, with a growing suspicion that the killer may be hiding in plain sight. The evidence is all there between the lines, waiting to be uncovered. So, and it is mixed media, which... I've really been enjoying, so I am excited about that component. Um, but like I said, just kind of cozy murder mystery type books are not my favorite. But it does seem a little bit heavier 
as well. So we'll see how I get on with it. So there's that one. And then, ooh, my cards are f trying to slide off. Uh, so that is, let's see, four. So we're on to number five, if I can shuffle. I'm horrible, like I said, at shuffling. So there's that one. So I'll do that. And then we'll go right here. Okay, that is six. <laughs> I have glasses and I still can't see. Okay, so number six is random read. So random color generator, random weather generator, or randomized entire TBR. So that's another one I'm going to have to come back to. So let's go for pull number six. Okay, let me do this one. Another, a jack. Not a, I was like, another king. No, that's a jack. So jack is in the title. Name in the title, number in the title, or color in the title, which is the five point one. Um, so let's see here. Um, I, ooh. Of course, this is the big one, but it does have, let's see, color in the title, which is going to get me the five points, and that is Sea of Silver Light. This is the fourth and final book in the Etherland series by Tad Williams, and this one is kind of sci-fi, um, retelling a little bit, like, a lot of, like, myth and, like, ancient Egyptian gods and such like lore and basically it's you have this virtual reality and kids are going into comas um, and getting stuck basically and so you have Rainy and she ends up going in to try to find her what happened to her brother um, and she also has uh, a Bushman an African Bushman uh, that is helping her and then there's like these two teenage character one pretends to be a boy in the online space, but it's actually a girl. And then um, the other one is terminally ill in real life. And so they get in and basically they go in and they get trapped. And there's this secret brotherhood. And then there's this also the secret group of the circle who are like kind of shut down the brotherhood. Um, and it's all VR, but like the virtual worlds are based on like fairy tales or classic fiction or like, like Egyptian gods and myth and such. And so it is a lot of fun. They are quite chunky though. Um, but not too bad to read. Like they're not as dense as you would think. Um, based on the size. So I'm excited to finally be able to finish this series. So that's going to work for my Jack. So there's that one. So let's see. We're up, That was six. So we're up to number seven. So we're... So the halfway point, okay, and let's go low again. We'll go this one. Another jack, <laughs> okay. Um, so again, in the title, name, number, or color. Um, I don't think I have any colors left. So, and none of these have numbers. So I guess I'm going to go with name, um, and we're going to do Harry Potter and the Half-Blood Prince. Of course, you have Harry Potter in the title there, and so that's only going to get me one point, unfortunately, but it works for the TBR, uh, and I figure every little bit helps, right? So this is my other chunky one, so at least we've got both chunky books on, but of course, like I said, this is middle grade slash YA, and so they're super easy to read and super quick. So there is that one, number seven. So now we're on poll number eight. All right. And let's go more center here. Another king, which is again, genre. So your favorite genre, host favorite genre, or rarely read genre. Um, and for rare, I'm gonna go rarely read again, because there's one more. And I'm gonna go with 
um, Barbarian's Taming by Ruby Dixon. Uh, this is basically sci-fi alien smut. So <laughs> is what it is. Um, none of those are things I typically read, uh, but I have been reading and enjoying the series. This is book eight in the series and basically you have these group of women and they get sex trafficked by these aliens their ship problems they get dropped on this planet um and there's these other aliens these big blue guys um that find them and kind of help protect them and to live on this planet they have to take in a Kui which is like a symbiont life force that helps them survive um, but their Kui also resonates when they find a suitable mate. Um, the ones that I have enjoyed so far are the ones that haven't had that resonance. Um, I mean I've enjoyed all of them. They're very like heartwarming and fun. Other than like the first one and then one of the other ones where the, the one woman has a lot of trauma from the original aliens that took them. Um, and the first one you have, you know, they're getting stolen and they're on the ship and it's very rough initially. But once you get past that point, it gets a lot better. Um, and yeah, these big blue aliens just want to love these women and they're just, it's a fun series. So I'm excited to continue on. And like I said, I'm not... I'm not a big sci-fi reader. I never read Alien Smut past this series, so there's that. Then let's see here. So that's one, two, three, four, five, and then eight. So that was eight. So number nine, pull nine. We're going to let's do top. Let's do this one. <laughs> number nine. Uh, so what is nine on the cover? Okay, so it says um, object on the cover, person on the cover, or building on the cover. So let's see if I can find a building on the cover. That one does have a building. That's an inside. They do have some people on all the covers, but this one I'm going to take because there is a castle on the cover. And so I'm going to count that as a building, which that will mean I get five points because of that. So there is that. And this is The Wishing Spell by Chris Colfert, which is the first book in the Land of Stories. I've been wanting to read the series for quite a while. I have them all. So that way I can just fly through them. And so yeah, I'm going to be starting with this one. It says, Alex and Connor Bailey's world is about to change. When the twins' grandmother gives them a treasured fairy tale book, they have no idea they're about to enter a land beyond all imagination. Um, imagining the land of stories where fairy tales are real. So that one down there is getting full. So that was what, nine I said? Um, two, four, six... Yeah, nine. <laughs> so, and so this is pull ten. Let's do bottom one. This one. So we have six again. I think we are. Yep, we already got six. Which that was random. So random color, random letter, or randomized entire TBR. So again, that one's going to have to wait. So now we're on to pull eleven. Let's do middle. Eight. Have we got an eight yet? Book in a series. Okay, so either start a series, get you one point, continue a series, or complete a series. Ooh. <laughs> I wish I hadn't chose Sea of Silver Light, but that was the only one that had a color in it. Um, so I'm not going to be able to complete a series out of what I have. Well, you know what? Actually, I think I am. Um, I'm going to go with Bone Bookshops and Bone Dust by Travis Baldry. Um, this is the prequel to Legends and Lattes. And I don't know if there's any more coming out or not. Um, but this completes the series up to this point anyway. So I'm going to count that, um, 
because there's no more at this point. If there's going to be more, I don't know. But there's no more at this point. So that will work for that. And so basically, um, in Legends and Lattes, you have Viv, and she's just done with, like, the orc life, being violent and such, and decides to open up a coffee shop. This is a prequel to that, so she is injured um, and ends up spending time, I think, at this secondhand bookshop, essentially why she's injured. So uh, looking forward to that. Again, kind of cozy fantasy, which is a lot of fun. So I think that was number that over here so that's two four six seven plus four is eleven so that was number eleven so two more we're on poll twelve so let's do kind of like a third I think <laughs> I don't know if that's a third let's do here okay Ooh, an ace so this one I'm not It's a host pick, um, which they're going to be doing shorts, and that doesn't really work work for my plan. So I'm going to keep that, and they'll just be like a 14th book, um, but I'm going to redo it, that one. Another eight. <laughs> so this one, I can continue a series, um, and for that one, I'm going to be going with like a river glorious by ray carson um so again the first one was walk on earth a stranger which i read for my early um, prompts and this is the second book in the series so it'll be continuing a series so only worth three points but it has like which works for buzzword and i'm so excited so like i said at this point the first one she was basically on the oregon trail headed towards california on the run from something um, and now they're in California. So we'll see where where it goes from here. And like I said, this will get me three points for continuing a series. Um, and so there's that one. Okay, so this is the last poll. Um, so let me go ahead and shuffle one more time. Okay, and let's go more towards the bottom. Right here. Okay, and we got another queen, which what was queen format. So audio, ebook, or physical. Um, so that works perfect. I have my other queens, so I'll still need to choose two physical books. I have number seven, which is someone else's pick. So I'll have to do that. And then I have two sixes, which is random generator. So let me go ahead and get that all sorted out i'm gonna go ask my husband to pick i'll do my random generators and then i will do my physical pick so i will be right back all right i am back and so i got all my books here and i'm just gonna run through them all again and show you the ones that i didn't pick with you guys the only one that i would still need to get to that's gonna kind of be an extra um is going to be of Mice and Men by John Steinbeck. Again, this is for genre -thon because I have two different prompts for that. Um, and this, I wanted a book for each, especially with as short as they are. Um, and this one is 107 pages, so just over 100 pages. Um, and so yeah, I'll be adding that on, but that really shouldn't be a problem with as short as it is. So we're just kind of, I went... I just stacked them by the numbers, um, make it easier when I'm looking down here. So the first one, I was not able to get the five points on. Um, and so we pulled the number two card, the two of diamonds, which again, the diamonds and the color doesn't really matter. Um, and so for this, I was able to do the three point prompt and that is same color as your last read, based on the last read. And so my last read was The Devil in the White City by Eric Larson. And you can see a very black background. So this one also has a very black background. Um, so that's going to work for that. Then let's see here. We did not pull a three. We did not pull a four. Which three was on your own TBR. Four was a long book. 
Five was a host read, didn't pull one of those either. And then we pulled two sixes. Um, and so I'll put the screenshot of my random letter generator because I didn't really feel like getting on the computer. Um, and I mean, I guess I could because the letters I got didn't work for any of the books I originally had on my TBR. So I already had to add two extras, but at least this way I had a little bit more control rather than randomizing my TBR. So I'm not going to get the five points for these, but I will get three points for each one. Um, and so that's already nine points that I will get for my team if I read everything. Um, so I did the random letter generator. It got F and then I got a D. I did each three times. So for F, I did it by author's surname. Um, and so again, we pulled the six. And for this one, I'm going to be reading The Thief Lord by Cornelia Funk. Um, where'd it go? <laughs> it's fallen. So I'm excited to read this one. I haven't read anything by this author. I do have like the Ink Spell series, um, but I haven't read them yet. And I found this one at a thrift store, and I'm just not quite ready to start the Ink Spell series, so I decided to go with this one, and again by Cornelia Funk. Uh, and so it says, Welcome to the magical underworld of Venice, Italy. Here hidden canals and crumbling rooftops shelter runaways and children with incredible secrets. After escaping from their cruel aunt and uncle, orphans Prosper and Beau meet a mysterious boy who calls himself the thief lord clever and charming the thief lord leads a band of street children who enjoy making mischief but the leaf lord also has a dark secret and suddenly prosper and Bo find themselves on a fantastical journey to a forgotten place what they discover there will change the course of their destiny forever so that's what i'll be reading for f and then for my d um again we got another six there uh, and I went with Franklin W. Dixon, and I'm going to be reading the first book in the Hardy Boys, The Tower Treasure. <laughs> and yeah, Hardy Boys is like a middle grade mystery series, kind of along the lines of Nancy Drew, but instead of Nancy, you have the Hardy Boys. I've never read them, but I do have several of these, and so we're going to start with the first one. So there is that one. Then let's see here. Um, we got a 1-7. And for this one, I'm only going to get one point. So I really didn't feel like doing a poll pick or a librarian pick. That definitely didn't work for me. So I ended up going with friend slash spouse. I had my husband choose. Um, and so there's that. And I just took the books that were left officially on my TBR. And there was four of them. And he ended up choosing The Stories of Eva Luna by Isabel Allenday. Allenday. <laughs> and yeah, I read the Eagle and Jaguar series by this author and I absolutely loved it. I've never read any of her adult stuff though and I'm looking forward to it. This is one of the books um, for my ABC title challenge. This is for my S author. It says, Eva Luna is a young woman whose powers as a storyteller bring her friendship and love. Lying in bed with her European lover, refugee, and journalist Rolf Car Carl. Carl. Carly? Carly? Maybe? Eva answers her request for the story you have never told anyone before. With these 23 samples of her vibrant artistry, interweaving the real and the magical, she explores love, vengeance, compassion, and the strengths of women. Creating a world that is at once poignantly familiar and intriguingly new. So, yeah, I'm excited to read that. Then, let's see here. We did pull two eights. Um, so, I'm going to be doing three points in continuing a series and five points in completing a series. So, in completing a series, well, you already saw this one. We're going to do bone shops bookshops and bone dust by travis baldry i already told you what this is about so i don't need to do that again and then for the other one again i already showed you this um and this is continuing a series again you have the eight and like a river by like a river glorious by ray carson the second book in a series and also works for my buzzword because it has a like in it so there is that then we pulled on the cover, 
um, just once. And so I was able to get the five point prop fulfilled. Uh, and that is building on the cover. And so we have the nine there and we have a castle here on the cover, which works for the building. So there is that. Uh, and again, I already told you about that one, so we don't need to do that again. Then we did not pull a 10, which was good reads, either high rating, low rating, or less than a thousand ratings. We didn't pull that, but we did pull two jacks, which were in the title. And so we're going to fulfill, um, color in the title. We only pulled, oh yeah which is five points, and then name in the title, which is only one point. Um, so here is the jack, and this one, of course, is color, and that's Sea of Silver Light by Tad Williams. So that will get me five points, and that's a chunky one, so let's hope I can finish it. And the other one was for name in the title, um, and we're going to be doing Harry Potter and the Half-Blood Prince by J.K. Rowling. Um, Harry Potter, obviously the name. So there's that. Then we pulled two queens. So I just did, out of the three books I had left, I chose two of them. Um, and so first up, we are going to be doing this queen. And we're going to be doing Throne of Glass by Sarah J. Moss. Um, I read The Assassin's Blade, which is a collection of the novellas that take place prior to the start of the series. And absolutely loved it. I did read Akatar. I haven't read any of the rest of the series. I wasn't a huge fan of Akatar, and I was thinking this author is overhyped. And then I read Assassin's Blade and absolutely loved it. So I am so excited to jump back into this world um, with Selena. Yeah, Selena, a Sardothian. And so basically, she as the series starts, it says, In a world without magic, an assassin is summoned to the castle, but she comes not to kill the vicious king who rules from his throne of glass, but to win her freedom. If she defeats 23 killers, thieves, and warriors, in a competition, she will be released from prison to serve as the king's champion. Her name is Selena Sardothian. The crown prince will provoke her, the captain of the guard will protect her, and a princess from a faraway land will befriend her. But something evil dwells in the castle, and it is there to kill. When her competitors start dying one by one, Selena's fight for freedom becomes a fight for survival and a desperate quest to root out the evil before it destroys her world. Uh, and like I said, I read the little novella that takes place before this and absolutely love this character, um, the world. So I'm really excited to actually dive into the main series for sure. So excited about that. Um, and then the other one was for my... ABC title challenge again for my R, and so the Queen, and I'm going to be reading Write Em As They Come by Rusty Tolk, The Life of John Rusty Tolk, 1886-1977, through 1977. Uh, and I found this at a thrift store, and so it's just like a little somebody, you know, did kind of their biography. It says, hijinks and hardships of cowboy life a century ago come to life in Rusty Tolk's autobiographical autobio Stories set in New Mexico, Arizona, and Oklahoma. Rock busting skills led him, along with friends, friend Pecos Higgins, to Wild West shows throughout the East, beginning with Miller Brown's 101 Ranch Wild West show at the Jamestown Exposition in 1907. There were summer long shows in Brighton Beach, a special appearance at New York City Polo Ground, and a memorable performance in England for the King and Queen. Tom Mix, Will Rogers, B. Ho Gray, Clay Mc. Gonagill and Bill Pickett were ordinary cowboys when Rusty worked alongside them. Rusty's yarn-spinning skills paint a picture of cowboy life as it really was before Hollywood's romanticized version. History comes alive as the stories range from tragedy to belly laugh. A cowboy dies when written by a rabbit skunk. Reactions of Rusty and Pecos when they saw their first movie. The stories are true and weave the reader into a lifestyle gone forever. So, yeah. This will be interesting. Like I said, I found it at a thrift store and, you know, I like kind of that Wild West and it's nonfiction. So that should be an interesting read. Then we had two queens. Um, and that was either audio, ebook or physical, physical being the five points. So 
I read physically, so I'm glad that was a 5.1. Um, and so first up, we're going to be reading... Well, that's not a queen. That's, that's a king. That's a queen. King. Oh, these were the physical books. Sorry. My brain is not here. These were the physical books. Then we had two kings, and these were based on genre. Um, and I was able to get my rarely read genres for both of them, which is worth five points. So I still get five points each, ten points. Um, and so we have King, and we're going to be reading The Appeal by Janice Hallett. I already talked about this. Not a big murder mystery, cozy mystery type person. Um, and then the other one is... Barbarian's Taming by Ruby Dixon, which is book eight of the Ice Planet and Barbarian series. And again, not big on sci-fi or alien smut type books. So um, even though I've been reading this series, this is the only series I read. It's not a genre I read. And then the only other card I did pull was One Ace, which is host pick. And like I said, they'll be doing shorts throughout the month. So I'll try to keep up with that and hopefully find something that I already own or that I'm interested in reading. Um, but that is the book. So 13 books. We have this little stack here, which is worth 20 points. Um, we got the big boys here, um, which I don't remember how many points those are worth. I'll try to include a point number here, what these are all going to add up to. Uh, and then these. So I'm definitely going to try to focus on, obviously, the ones that are worth five stars first. Um, that way I can rack up those points. And then, you know, kind of work my way down to the ones that aren't worth as much. And that way I can just see what, what I can earn for Team Red. Um, but I am really excited to participate this, and I'm glad it did kind of work out. Um, so yeah, I'm bummed about Aurelium, but at least I have this readathon to participate in, which is going to be so much fun. Um, and I was kind of bummed because I was like, I can't participate. Now I can. So the silver lining and everything. Uh, yeah, I'm excited for this. Let me know if you're participating and in which team. Are you team TBR like me? Or are you more of a mood reader? Let me know which team you're going to be on. Definitely make sure you go check out Becca and Chloe. Um, like I said, Chloe's new to me, so I definitely have to go see what types of videos they do. Um, and that way I can watch some of those. And that's it from me. I'm going to go ahead and leave you guys here. If you just want to let me know you were here and help support the channel, you can always leave either a rabbit or any type of animal emoji down in the comments below. Yeah, that's it for me. I'm going to leave you here. Happy reading, everyone. Bye.